like a sack of flour. And Vladimir Vampir does not have any margin for error in this match, and he already made one mistake, but he's got to take these kind of risks. Oh! Oh, 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 what a clothesline by Big Neil, the real deal, dropped him right on his head. Now, if I were Vladimir Vampire, I would choke Neil with that tie. Why the heck is this man wearing a tie in a wrestling match? I guess because he's a supermodel. And he knows that not only wrestling promoters, but I guess other modeling agencies will be watching this tape. He wants to appeal to everybody. You know what move that was, don't you? Oh, yeah. Snake Eyes! Snake Eyes from one of your buddies. That's right, although I would hardly call Neil Big Sexy. I'd call him big, I don't know about sexy. He's certainly trying to be sexy in there with the outfit, and a spinning side suit. Oh, no, I'll, I'll give the guy credit, that's a pretty sexy move right there, I like that. Big Neil with the huge leg drop, and Vladimir Vampire may be out of it before it even begins. I'm telling you what, I came to this match, Jeff Gorman, prepared to hate Big Neil the real deal. Another big leg drop there. Wow. I came here prepared to dislike him, to make fun of him, to blast him. Here's a cut, one, two. No, Vampire kicked out. out. What a nice move by Vampire. The big deal, the real deal, is really showing me a lot right now. Really looking good out there for a big man. A lot of fire, a lot of fight, a lot of high risk maneuvers, too. And you know, say what you will about this whole Model Zinc thing with Hot Shot, Big Neil, and now Kurt G. Regulator, and also Joey Centerfold, but uh, they have really gotten it done in the ring ever since this whole thing started. Big Neil really seems to be wrestling like he's a star. It's really helped out his, uh, maybe his personal psyche being a supermodel. Well, maybe for Big Neil, the real deal, a man who clearly has some psychological problems, the way he acts in there, maybe for him it's good. I'm telling you what, the less than soul one will help Joey Centerfold, though. Here was a kid who was having a great career with hot models here. I don't know where he could go. Oh, my Lord. Look out. Oh, my Lord. Here it comes. You want to see it? No, he was over the choke slam, but a low blow now by Vladimir Vampire. Hey, what the heck? And a DDT. Did he just yell DDT? He did. Let he us do the commentary. Did. Let's get rid of this guy. He talks too much. <laughs> Up to the top, and if Vladimir wins, he'll face Buffy the Vampire Slayer next week. Oh, wow. Nice splash. One. And the hot shot pulling Vampire out of the ring. Now, see, this is ridiculous. Scott, Big Neil, the real deal, a huge man. Needs help from, from Drew. Needs help from this bodyguard who just killed Vladimir Vampire. Three on one, I'll tell you what, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Well, Kurt G. Regulator did his job. Hot shot has not had a hair on his head touched because Vladimir Vampire cut down by Kurt G. Regulator. And it may be time to feed the monster. That's right. Rolled back in by the bodyguard. And Vladimir Vampire maybe going for the big ride. It's choke slam time. Here it comes. Oh, he planted him there, and that's going to be it. Two, and that's it. Everybody's Somebody counting. call 911, because that's what it looks like. Big Neil, the real deal, with a big choke slam. He's a big sword, but there's your winner, Big Neil, the real deal. And look at him move. He's suddenly been possessed by the spirit of John Travolta in there. Hey, I give the guy credit. He wrestled a great match. Big choke slam there to finish off Vladimir Vampire. Let's give Vladimir credit too, though. For oh, yeah. a small man wrestling basically against three guys. He put up a heck of a fight. Models it getting stronger as Big Neil, the real deal, gets jiggy with it and gets the win. One will be first in line to face Christian York. Jeff, I'm expecting an unbelievable match here. Reckless Youth, I believe, maybe the best junior heavyweight in the world. Mike Quackenbush is not far behind him. I want to apologize to my legions of fans out there. I just did the survey leading into this match. First time I've ever done the survey where I really thought it sucked. So maybe next time it'll be better. Maybe next time. Sorry, Scott. Reckless Youth working on the left arm here. This is a match that Reckless Youth has waited two months for, ever since he had to vacate the junior heavyweight title due to his concussion. That's when Christian York won the belt in the four-way dance. But he said he would come after the winner of that four-way dance. And if he can beat Mike Wagenbush here, he will get that title shot that he's been waiting for. So about that very, very, very critical match in the careers of both these gentlemen, Mike Quackenbush and Reckless Youth. I'm telling you what, though, I can't say enough good about Reckless Youth. I think Mike Quackenbush is an excellent junior heavyweight. The Reckless Youth man, he beats him big, he beats him small, he beats them all. Reckless reversing out of that one as we've seen some really good mat wrestling by both these guys. Reversing things in midair is Reckless, but now hooking him up is Quackenbush. Getting the crucifix and the shoulders down. Leg sweep by Reckless, one count. Both went for the drop kick and back up. Great chain wrestling by both men. It all started when Mike Quackenbush took Reckless Youth up for a back suplex. 
All Recklessen would shift his weight a little bit to land on top of him, and they went from there. Two great wrestlers with a great series of moves. Reckless use, we know, a, we know a lot about him, saying the Reckless rules. A lot of people, including myself, agree with him. Mike Quackenbush has really worked like a dog to improve, and he really studies a lot of Japanese tapes. A lot of times you'll see Quackenbush do a move that you see almost exclusively in Japan, throw something different at his opponent. Well, Mike Quackenbush, like I said, I mean, he, you know, Reckless Youth is the kind of guy where if you're going to beat him, you have to stay up all night studying stuff, no doubt about that. Mike Quackenbush has done that, but you know what? For every tape Mike Quackenbush studied, I think Reckless Youth probably studied too. Reckless setting up Quackenbush, here he goes. Went for the baseball slide and Quackenbush back in the ring. Whoa, somersault plancha into the crowd. What a great move by Mike Quackenbush. He caught Reckless Youth a little bit off guard. Reckless Youth went for the baseball slide, landed on his feet, but facing away from the ring, as you noticed, turned around to get a face full of somersault plancha. And now we will see if Quackenbush can follow up in the ring and a boot to the back there, setting him up. Nice arm bar submission here. It's almost like a stump puller. Has his left leg really against Reckless Deuce's head, twisting his head back, yanking both his right and his left arm up with constant pressure. Reckless Deuce gets the ropes. Very initial, very, very original submission move there by Mike Quackenbush. Quackenbush trying to keep things going against Reckless Deuce, swing and a miss. Reckless off the ropes, caught him into a falling arm breaker. Oh, it's divorce court. It not only separates your shoulder, it divorces it from your entire body. I like that, the divorce court. Reckless. Wow, look at that snap on that arm ringer there. And this is something that we've really seen Reckless Youth do. Pick out a body part and make a, a really tough strike at that. And now he's called for the stretch slum. That's a submission. He's got it hooked. Is Quack going to give up? There he goes. Oh, the second twist is what usually does it. What's Quack and what's going to do? Reckless Youth really grinded in that twist plum submission out. Now Quack has a little bit of leverage here. He might get to the ropes, Jeff. Stretch Plum, named after Plum Mariko, a Japanese woman wrestler. I thought it was a twist plum. A stretch plum. Well, you can't say, come on, baby, let's do the stretch. So let's call it a twist plum. Okay, the twist plum. As Reckless working on the arm once again. And you see Reckless picking out the body part. And after he went after that arm of the first, he's just going to stay on it and stay on it and stay on it. Wouldn't be surprised if he went for a submission eventually on this arm. Now some of these idiots here in the crowd yelling, boring. You know what they're talking about? They're drab, miserable little lives. That's huh. what they're talking about. Reckless is the best there is in Steel City Wrestling. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> Reckless let the fans know where he's there. I don't like it. I love it. He says it's called wrestling, and that's true. And there's a beautiful quebrada, and we're going to get to... And What's that, a quebrada? A quebrada. You know all that stuff. You must study those Mike Tanay tapes. I do my best. I guess that's what I do with my drab little life. Snapmare. And now winding it up. Wonderful elbow to the face. What's the kind of a little Dusty Rhodes shimmy? A little Dusty Rhodes shake? A little Dusty Rhodes maneuver in the back before I drop the big elbow on you, Daddy? Quite a little bit less weight there on Reckless Youth, though. I don't think Dusty could uh, compete for the junior heavyweight title. A little more agility, though. Reckless Youth, man, he can deliver those high-impact moves with lightning-like speed. And Reckless looking good here against Lightning Mike Quackenbush. And I think some of the fans here don't seem to understand that in order to set up these high-flying moves, you've got to have your man grounded and you've got to keep him down with the mat, the mat wrestling. And Reckless Youth is certainly doing that. Lightning Mike Quackenbush is a great competitor. Oh, here goes Reckless at the top! Whoa! Reckless on the top rope, misses the acai moonsault. And it looked great, but Quackenbush was out of the way. And we can just see that these two aren't just a couple of high flyers. They really know how to stretch, literally, their opponent and twist them. I'll tell you what, here's where you've got to give Reckless Youth a lot of credit because Quackenbush, one of the best light heavyweights in Steel City Wrestling. Oh, a little, little slap fest! The palm thrust, courtesy of Jushin Thunder Liger. Kill the world backbreaker by Quack. Like I was saying, Quackenbush until this moment was really getting dominated, but now he's turned the match around. He's so quick, he can turn around in the heartbeat and the swan dive headbutt. Cover! Two! How quickly these junior heavyweight matches can turn around, Jeff. One minute, Reckless Youth enjoyed an advantage for a good six to eight minutes, and now it's all Mike Quackenbush. Reversing things into a reverse roll-up? No. Who's going to get it here? Quackenbush pushes off Reckless. Underneath. 
Oh, Reckless caught him that time. Whoa! Tornado DDT! He got him! What do we got here? We got two, we got... Oh, I thought he had three there. How did Mike Quackenbush kick out after that excellent Tornado DDT by Reckless Shoot? Boy, Quackenbush has really shown something here. He was able to maneuver out of that stretch plum and now kicking out of the Tornado DDT. Twist plum. Twist plum, that's right. Setting him up on the second rope. What's Reckless going for here? The headbutt to the... A running, nuts. driving headbutt to the rib cage of Mike Quackenbush. Now he's going to go upstairs. Reckless knows how to set up the move. And now he's going to try something different. He's always thinking two or three moves ahead. He did that headbutt to set this up. The spinning Super Frankenstein. That has to be it. One, two. What is it going to take to beat Mike Quackenbush? Jeff gunplay? It might is it going to take a knife to the gut? Is he going to have to like stab him in the back like Monica Sellers? How the heck do you beat this man? It might take some kind of concealed weapon because Quackenbush he seems to want the junior heavyweight title just as bad as Reckless Youth, and whoever wins is going to get that all-important shot against Christian York. Oh, call for the Three Stooges eye doink. This Reckless Youth is like Jim Carrey in that one movie to the cable guy. He's a part of the TV, he's a part of the pop culture, and then he sees he'll use to his advantage. <gasps> Springboard Bulldog by Quackenbush. We get one, two, oh. I Reckless thought my boy Reckless bought the farm there. That was a great flurry offense by Mike Quackenbush. And this is very important for Reckless because if he loses here, he's going to be shut out of the junior heavyweight picture because Quackenbush will get that title shot. And Quack wants it bad. Setting him up here. Oh, pushed him off. But he sprints right back up, comes running back in, sprints to the top. Oh, super Frankenstein, or is it? One, two, no Reckless kicks out. What a match. This is one for the ages. Definitely. Quackenbush. It's like they have some kind of unlimited arsenal of maneuvers. They're just going at him. Bang, bang, bang. Springboard. That's a quack and smash when it came up empty. That goes to show you. Try something that idiot Sabu tries, and you're in a lot of trouble. And now Reckless is going to try to capitalize on that one. Oh, Northern Lights Buster, the snowplow. And now what's he calling for here? Pile driver of some sort? He's whatever he is, I think it might be lights out for Mike Quackenbush. No, it's a twist plum. Oh, it's a twist plum again, the stretch plum. It's one plum of a maneuver. <laughs> it, he is just twisting Quackenbush's torso and up. That's it. That'll do it. That'll do it. Wait, did he win? I didn't see the referee call for the bell. What happened here? I didn't see Quackenbush tap out either. What do we got here? I gotta feel we might have a time limit draw. It's Might a have a time limit draw. Ten minute draw. What a match. Whoa. So what happened to the title shot? No, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a three-way dance coming up with these two guys against Christian North. That would be the only fair thing if you ask me. Well, we're going to see Jamie Scott making his way back into the ring, and we're going to see what's going to become. Who is going to challenge Christian York for the title? I would like to see both Quackenbush and Reckless beat the hell out of this referee Wood. I don't like him. He's a cheater. He's incompetent. I just don't like him. You don't like him either, do you? Admit it. You don't like him. You don't like him. Say it. Well, don't be afraid to say you don't like him. Hey, you want to come in this building and you don't like him. Whoa. Yeah. He might do it to Chris Wood, too. Now, what's this Wood guy doing? He's, He's trying to screw things up even more. Somebody kill him. He's explaining to the ring announcer, Jamie Scott. Let's see what he's saying here. Well, that's like Einstein talking to Kierkegaard, isn't it? A coin toss? That's a bunch of crap, a coin toss. I say go ahead and stick, swear, it's only cable. Reckless calls head. Quack wins the flip, Quack's gonna get the title shot. See, now who the heck thought of this? That's ridiculous. That's absurd. Clearly, Reckless Shoot had the better of that match. It should have gone to a 10-point mud system, some kind of...